Can you hear me okay? Uh, I do have props, so uh, I'll just warn you. Um, a little housekeeping, as, as Stuart mentioned. Um, I am not a cryptologist. Um, full disclosure, I can't factor polynomial time using a quantum dongle. I'm not even sure what a quantum dongle is. Um, but I do have a mystery to, uh, to submit to you all. First off, uh, thank you to Stuart and Tal for uh, including me. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be presenting at the RUM session. It's a mystery that um, connects through the literary titan John Steinbeck, uh, the Ukrainian poet Tara Shevchenko, and a gentleman named Thomas Thomas. That's his real name, and he did live on Thomas Street at one point, um, but I digress. This is uh, uh, Tasha Thomas. Um, she is a classmate of mine from Claremont McKenna. We went to uh, school together way back in the 80s. And over beers late one night, we were chatting about the concept of how it's important to read the entire canon of one particular author. Um, the sort of thing you talk about at liberal arts colleges uh, over beers. I proposed that I would read uh, the works of John Steinbeck. He was the first big book that I read when I was a teenager at Cannery Row. And uh, I had read a number of his pieces after that, so I was halfway there. Tasha, um, Tasha said that, that she found that very interesting because she had a personal relationship with, uh, with John Steinbeck. Um, in fact, her father, um, the Thomas Thomas, he, um, he was a college student in Monterey in 1966, and he was looking for a place to live. And so he um, was introduced to a, um, a lovely older lady named Beth Ainsworth, and, uh, and she said that he would, she'd be happy to have him stay at, uh, at her house in an empty room. Little did uh, Thomas Thomas know that Beth Ainsworth was actually formerly named Beth Steinbeck, was John Steinbeck's sister, and that this quaint little cottage that he rented the room from was the ancestral home of the Steinbeck family. In fact, the, the, the building where John Steinbeck wrote a number of his, of his works. So it was certainly a thrill for, for Thomas Thomas. At this point, John Steinbeck was an international literary superstar, Grapes of Wrath, Cannery Row, East of Eden of Mice and Men. Um, he, was, he was a titan. And although he lived in the East Coast, he would come back to uh, Monterey on occasion to see his sister. So Thomas Thomas had the opportunity to, to meet with John Steinbeck a couple of times. He was a big fan of his writing. And at one point when Steinbeck showed up, Thomas Thomas proposed that he um, would sign a copy of his, his uh, edition of Cannery Row and Steinbeck readily agreed. Steinbeck was famous for um, offering very personal inscriptions. He wouldn't just dash off a signature. And so he took the copy of Cannery Row from Thomas Thomas and reappeared a couple of months later and gave him this. On the right is a sort of a clever little personal reference to Tom from John Steinbeck, who's been sleeping in my bed. But on the left is really the reason why I'm here. Um, this is this curious inscription that Steinbeck included uh, in the book as well. Kani maum serat twini sener ni maum seri. At least that's how I think it's pronounced. Um, Thomas, uh, Thomas Thomas was thrilled that someone like John Steinbeck would sort of include him on this sort of personal literary quest. And uh, when he left, with a twinkle in his eye, he told Thomas Thomas, when you figure this out, let me know. So Thomas Thomas took it upon himself to, to try and figure out what the heck this thing meant. And he, uh, he, went all the, he turned over all the, the sort of obvious you know, clues. Um, he went to linguists. He went to Steinbeck experts. He went to the Defense Language Institute in Monterey. Um, nothing, nothing materialized. Steinbeck died a couple years later, and, and apparently so did the, the, this literary quest um, until, until I took it up. Um, I made a film called Lost in the Fog a couple of years ago, and after I finished uh, Lost in the Fog, I was fishing around for um, a next, my next movie, and so I was going through uh, my folder of, of materials. That's a recreation, by the way. I just shot that the other day. Um, but I came across this copy of, of this curious inscription that Tasha gave me many, many years ago back in college, um, and so I went and I met with Thomas, and I, and I told him I wanted to, to sort of take up the mantle, um, so to speak, 
Um, and I pretty much did everything that I could. Um, I pretty much did everything that, I, that, that Thomas did. Went to the same sort of people. I couldn't find anything. Um, and so I kind of at wit's end, I finally submitted it to antiquarian booksellers in San Francisco. And John Crichton at the Brick Row Bookshop said um, that he had seen an inscription like this. He didn't know what it meant, but he had seen another reference to it. It occurred at the Roxborough Club, a famous bibliophile um, club. They would print these pamphlets at their meetings, and they would talk about um, uh, whatever the subject of the day was. Uh, in 1970, they came across um, they came across uh, <laughs> um, um, a, a, a reference uh, to um, to some writing that Steinbeck did when he was a, a, a sophomore at at Stanford, and they, they proposed that they would print that. They went to Steinbeck and he said, politely, he refused, basically. Um, but he did offer um, something else in its stead. He offered this little piece, which is a translation of a Ukrainian poem by Terry Shevchenko, the famous Ukrainian poet. And um, he translated into a secret language that he devised. I had found my Rosetta Stone. It wasn't so far-fetched. Steinbeck had been to Ukraine with Robert Kappa and wrote about it in a Russian journal. Um, but I finally found another reference, and I was going to be able to potentially crack this code. There were some obvious similarities, Melm, knee, some funny accents. Um, long story short, uh, now I have to find some Ukrainian experts, <laughs> which I've enlisted. Um, but uh, the hunt continues, and so um, I submit it to uh, I submit it to you, the esteemed members um, of the International Association of Crypt Cryptologic Researchers. Um, if you deign to take on this challenge, I will offer all, any and all of my materials. Um, and of course, uh, you will be rewarded with fame and fortune because it's a documentary, of course. Additionally, um, you can have as many copies of my documentary, Lost in the Fog, as you wish. Thank you for your time.